today on Divorce Court. I'm here to get the judge to help save my marriage and advise me on what I should do with the problems that I'm going through with my husband. He's He's been running the streets. He don't want to spend no quality time with me. We can't agree on our family issues. My wife be complaining that um, we don't have too much sex because when I get home, I be tired. I want the judge to tell Aaron what he is doing wrong to a good woman before he finds himself by himself. Divorce court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Lori Pritchard and Aaron Smith. The two of you have been together for two and a half years, married only for seven, seven months. months. In the courtroom with us, uh, we have Jordi Lapointe. Good day to you as well. You are Mrs. Pritchard's uh, witness, and we're going to talk to you momentarily. But before we do, I want to start with Mrs. Pritchard. Why don't you tell me, why are we in divorce court after only seven months of marriage? Well, Judge, I would like for you to advise me on my marriage and help save my marriage, with including Aaron running the streets. He's, um... Our sex life has changed drastically. Uh, we can't agree on family issues. Um, just numerous, Nothing's going numerous, right. Nothing's going right. No, go, just, well, let's start out with him running the streets. Why don't you give me an idea how often he's gone, where he goes, and what, if you know, he uh, this, does. This is like every day. Every time I turn around, I mean, I could be in the kitchen cooking. I could be washing dishes. You know, I could be in the restroom. Next thing I know, I'll go outside to see what he's doing, smoking a cigarette or something, because we don't smoke in the house. And he's out, all right, pew, gone. You know? And I'm like, he be turning his phone off um, for like two hours, two, three hours at a time, turning the phone off, won't return my phone calls, any of this type of stuff. I mean, so what, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to think? You now, know? Mr. Smith, is she accurate with respect to your uh, goings on? No. No, not really, but um, my wife, Laurie, she want me to be, uh, you know, she, you know what I mean? My wife, my wife, Laurie, she want me to be. Talk to me, talk to me. My, she wants you to be at home. Yeah, you know, 24 7, but you know, you, you, you know. Well, let me ask you, now, Mr. Smith, I'm gonna help you out. I'm gonna help you out now. Um, do, are you working? Yeah, I'll be you working. You working? I'm working seven days a week. Seven days a week. Now, does he work seven days a week? Most of the time. Okay. That's why it feels like he's not home a lot. That's one thing. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Right. You, so that's part of it. After work, how often do you go out? Just like on the weekend. On the weekend, Friday and Saturday? Friday and Saturday. Be chilling. I'll just be that's chilling with them what? That's not true. Uh, Tell me what you see. It's every day. Every day after he gets off work, he knocks off, come in, pew, he's out the door. He's going to do whatever he feels he wants to do. That's well, not... Well, do you know what he's doing? No, I, I, he said he's going to clear, uh, clear his mind, drink him a few beers, chill with his homeboys and stuff like this. Do you clear your mind every day after work, and does that require leaving the house? Yeah, sometimes. Uh-huh. Sometimes. Uh -huh. Well, I understand you spend a lot of time tracking him, finding him, investigating oh. things. Tell me what you do in order to determine his whereabouts. Okay, okay. Well, let me tell you. I don't, I don't track him. He, oh, he's, he tries to tell me that's lying. what I do. No, I do not. I do not track him. You know, the only, uh, I found some, I did some investigations of my own uh, in March. What'd you do? We was living in Texas for a few months, you know, uh -huh. with a family member and stuff like that. Well, whenever we was on our way back down here, whenever we got back to my family member's house, you know, I, I went to the U-Haul, came back in, him and my parent was having a discussion. And I caught, like, the end of the conversation. So I'm like, well, what's going on? And so my mama said, oh, well, I found out that such and such said that he's texting his ex-girlfriend for the past week. For the past week, he's been texting his ex-girlfriend saying that he was going to be with her when we got back home. OK, so I'm like, where's your phone at? Where's your phone at? Oh, the phone suddenly disappeared. Said, look for me. OK? So I'm like, really, really, okay. So the next day he went to work. So what I did was I did some investigations. Cause right before then, a couple of days before we had left to come back from Texas, a paper came out of his pocket and it was like a login and a password. Okay? So I tried to use that and go on Facebook, but it wouldn't log in. I said, well, hmm, let me see. Cause you know, they got Gmail, Yahoo's, et cetera. Right, right, right. So I hit one of them up, logged in, 
and it was an account that was created February 23rd, okay? Then I went on the phone logs on his phone, and then February 23rd, some phone calls mysteriously was made to his phone. I called the number, it was disconnected. I said, really, really? So two weeks later, I called the number and the ex-girlfriend answered the phone. So you tell me, you tell me. So I showed him the information. He like, oh, that was my homeboy's number. No, it is not. I talked no, to her. No, it is not. I talked to her. She answered the phone. Mr. Smith, you want to respond to that? She did a lot of good work. She lied. You know what? She lied because... Because... Not look at me, Mr. Smith. Look you know, at me. You know, she lied. I am not lying. Lie. Lie. No, I am not. Judge, look how Black I keep Black and it. white don't lie. Man, Mr. I keep, Mr. Smith. You know, I keep it 100. I keep it 100. I mean, with my wife. bring it 100 for you me. Know. Well, what's the truth of the matter? Uh, uh, the truth. What's really going on? I mean, you know, you say you say you know. I mean, this don't tell me. Don't talk to you. Could stay home. I mean, this tell me, but you tell me where your wife is wrong. Talked about the Facebook page. Don't have no Facebook page. <laughs> All right, hear that. Mr. Smith, do you know why Ms. Lapointe is here? Hmm. Why? Tell me why. I don't know. I'm asking you. <laughs> no, no, not really. Ms. Lapointe, why don't you come forward, please? Mm. <laughs> and who are you to uh, Ms. Pritchard and Mr. Smith? I'm a good friend of Lori's. Okay. Do you have something you want to tell me about what's going on in this marriage? Yes, ma'am. Go right ahead. Okay. It all started when they got married. Well, mm -hmm. maybe before that, you know, he would call and try to talk to me and stuff like that. And oh, what? No, no. So, like, when we lived, we used to live by each other. And he used to come over and try to talk about their problems. And I'd be like, no, where's Lori? Well, she's at home doing this, doing that. Well. Why don't you bring her over here? I don't want to be alone with you. That's not right. Mm -hmm. And then around Mother's Day, he texts my phone after 11 p.m. talking about, hey, sexy, where you at? Can I come to your camper? I got to talk to you. Yeah. And I was like, I read the messages, and my boyfriend, he got upset and stuff like that. And All right, hang on just a second. She's not satisfying my needs like they need to be met. It used to be on an everyday basis. Now it's like maybe once a week if I'm lucky. I can't even get a kiss or a hug. Where they do that at? We just got married. We newlyweds. You know what I'm saying? He'd rather go drink beer, hang out with his friends and all this and whatnot. Man, what about hey, hey, me? Huh? What about me? Hello, sexy. So what you doing? Is, is, is that what we got there? Yes, ma'am. Hello, sexy. What you doing, Mr. Smith? What do you have to say? Did you did that happen? Yeah, you know that happened. You know, look, but why know, did that happen? You know, I'm about to tell you what happened. Okay. You, you know, me, Larry, got up into it. I left the house. You know, then I called Jody. Told Jody, say, look out, Jody. I need to talk to you. Jody, Jody say, man, for what? I say, me, Larry, just got up into it. I need to come over to talk to you. But but, like but, but, but but the use yeah. of the word, hey, sexy, does not seem to indicate that you would want to speak to her about reconciliation within your marriage. Hold up, hold, hold up. I mean, that's a, you know, I mean, that's a little nickname, you know. Before, look, <laughs> hey, say, you know, before, I mean, me, before me, Jody, will start talking on, on Facebook, you know. I gave Jody the name on Facebook, you know? Mr. Smith, might I recommend you never engage in any criminal conduct whatsoever. <laughs> I think you should play it straight and right. Don't gamble, don't do anything. Because ju you're just coming off looking all wrong and raggedy over there. Yes. Thank you, Ms. LaPointe. I appreciate that. Uh, have a seat. You got a good friend there. She came right to you with, with, yes, with the nonsense. She did. You know, some women, free radical women out there, take advantage of a problem in your relationship. Right, so, right. so good for you, Miss Pritchard. I'm going to ask you this. You say your sex life is no longer what it used to be. Why don't you tell me what's going wrong in the romance department? Yes, yeah. ma'am. I mean, he's not satisfying my needs like they need to be met. 
It used to be on an everyday what? basis. Now it's like maybe once a week if I'm lucky. I can't even get a kiss or a hug. Where they do that at? We just got married. We newlyweds. You know what I'm saying? He'd rather go drink beer, hang out with his friends and all this and whatnot. Man, she what about me? What about me? You know, I stay home, I cook, I clean, I do whatever you need me to do. Make sure your things are lined up for what you need to be done. As your woman, you know, you need to realize what you got before it's gone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mr. Smith, Mr. Smith, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me phrase this for you so, so we can go somewhere with it, okay? Now look at me, Mr. Aaron. She's telling you a laundry list of problems that she has. She's not satisfied sexually. She got you texting her saying, hey, sexy. She's got your life all lined up just the way she wants it, and she feels like she's getting nothing in return, including some basic sex. Tell me where she got that wrong. You know what, Joe? She started complaining so much. She complains too much. Yes, she complained. What does she I, complain I mean, about? She be, she, you know, she be complaining like, I be going out so much, you know? Now, you said That's you don't go out very much. How, I why don't is go she complaining out then? She Thank always you. complaining about something, you know? Well, other than that, what is she complaining about? Every time I come home from work. What she got to say? She got to say something. Hello? What? I mean, you work with me. Work with me. She's talking about as soon as I come home, I tell her, look, babe, I'm about to go to the store. She could, I mean, whoop dad in. Complaining already. Whoop dad is. Yeah. <laughs> your food's cooked, your, 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 your clothes are laid out for, for you to take a bath when you come home and stuff like that. Come on, give me me. Give me my time. He has a nasty attitude, like he cannot be wrong about nothing. Everything that he say is right. He don't have no compromise, uh, compromise mm -hmm. within reason. You know, it's, it's all. Oh, his nonsense. way or the highway. His way or, or, or it's gonna be hell to pay. So Ms. Pritchard, why don't you tell me about the complications uh, this marriage has caused within your family? Um, well, the complications with my family is many aspects, mm -hmm. you know, like a little, some racism, you know, with the, uh, us being interracially married. What have they said or done that makes you believe they do not like the fact that you are married well, to a black man? For one thing, a family member it had me on her life insurance policy, mm -hmm. you know, as her beneficiary to handle her funeral arrangements and stuff like this. I mean, me and my husband, we, we she took you off the insurance? She took me off of it in April. We was married at the end of March 26. Uh, so she changed in April, and then she made comments like, oh, ain't nobody in the family wants to mess with you because you're married to a black man, or you got your with you, you know, and stuff like that. The N-word? Yeah, the N-word, you know, and stuff like that. And, you know, Aaron, Aaron has been a good man, you know, and stuff like that, and they just don't respect him, you right, know? Right. So at the same time, I respect him, you know, when it comes to my family. I respect his wishes, you know, and... It, it draws us apart, and then it draws us together. You right, because you've some, got to fight a common common uh, enemy like a rock, in your family, mm -hmm. but sometimes it just... When he does do wrong, they're like, uh-huh, see, yeah, I told mm -hmm. you when you got... Da, da, right, da, da. right, now, right. Now, Mr. Smith, how do you feel about how her... Because I, I understand you live with her family, is that yeah. right? Mm -hmm. How do they treat you, and how... And do you believe that your wife is stepping up on your behalf appropriately? Some, yeah. I say, yeah, but her family, her family do be talking behind my back. Mm -hmm. Tell me what it's doing. I mean, I mean, tell me, tell I, me the struggle, some struggle that you've had because of that. I just don't feel right. Okay. You know? Yeah. Why don't you tell me what your primary frustration is? If there was one thing I could wave a magic wand and get her to do, what would it be? To listen. Listen to what? <laughs> Because I gotta tell you, Mr. Smith, and I'm not mad, but it's kind of hard to understand you. You're sort of, you're sort of all over the place with it. I don't get a simple declarative sentence from you. This is what she lying, you know, stuff like that. So, here's what I did. Since it was so early in the marriage, I had you guys fill out compatibility tests. Mm -hmm. 
And the one thing that you were sure about each other is neither one of you likes the other one's attitude. Who no, indeed. Oh, no. What is it about her attitude? How or, or what does she say that you find so annoying? With her attitude... Man, she got... Give me an example, maybe. <laughs> Don't look Mr. at me. Mr. Smith, I'm trying to help <laughs> you right. a little bit. I mean, Tell me about the last time she made you angry with her attitude. Today, this morning. <laughs> tell me, tell me what happened this morning. I told her, uh, um, babe, the phone, I mean the phone right up in the room. The first thing she done, left off the room, went to Jody's room. I went outside. I missed it. <laughs> uh, sound like his fault to me. I'm gonna give it. To, I'm gonna go over to your wife. Maybe she, maybe can, she can show me where it is. Okay. Miss Pritchard, what what happened this morning that okay. got everybody upset? What happened was he forgot his own cell phone on the counter. I done had my stuff in my bag. Okay, that's on you if you left your things. That's not my. That's not my problem. That's your problem. Don't get all upset at me for something that you did. Will you tell me about what kind of attitude he displays towards you that upsets you so? Okay, he has a nasty attitude. Like, he cannot be wrong about nothing. Everything that he say is right. He don't have no compromise, <laughs> uh, compromise mm -hmm. within reason. You know, it's, it's oh, this His is way gonna, or the highway. His way or, or, or it's gonna be hell to pay. Richard, I understand your frustrations. Yes, ma'am. It is difficult to bring a husband home to live in the house with your family because to them, that's like, you know, bringing some dude off the street into their house to take yeah. care of. And that's, hard, and that's hard to live with. And it's difficult to bridge that racial divide as well. So you've got pressures on you that are extraordinary. Yes, ma'am. Might I ask this of you to remain calm in your comments and your criticisms to your husband? Right. Do not accelerate the situation. Don't make it worse. Don't make it louder. Because decibel levels don't do it. What does it is a calm request and logic. I think that you have the ability to run circles around it. Right. Don't do that. He gets confused. Right. He's, he's dizzy. <laughs> stay calm, stay cool, stay direct, stay clear about what you want. You need to stay home. All right. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh -huh. We don't, you know, you, you work every day and you we want to see you. That's why we marry you people. We want to see you. We want to touch you. you we want to tell you stories. We want to hear a few of yours. Give her that. Act like you love her. Uh, act like it's a, it's a good thing to do. Yes, it might be easier to be out with the boys and the beer in the back. But you got this woman holding down the fort. Amen. Her mother is... You know, she's got a family member who's dying. Come home. You with me? Mm -hmm. Come home. <laughs> you got a good friend there. Tighten it up, Mr. Smith, because you're going to lose a good woman. This matter is adjourned. Thank you, ma'am.